Hey everyone, I'm Stefan. This is Graham. How's it going? This is Travis. Hey there. And we are three different ones. Last year we compiled a massive list of albums we think are interesting and now talk about them for your enjoyment. Today we're talking about Pantera's fifth album, Cowboys from Hell, one of the first groove metal albums, or at least one of the first to gain a good deal of popularity. Uh, this album uh, kind of constituted Pantera taking on a new sound and attitude compared to what they'd previously done. <laughs> uh, the band members kind of considered this their their true debut because they were for the first time they were working with the legitimate producer and Terry Day. They had a serious mm -hmm. label backing them with Atco Records, and uh, they they were exploring kind of darker material. They incorporated heavier guitar parts, which was kind of the mm -hmm. the sound people came to associate with. Uh, Dimebag Daryl and uh, yeah, it's they they were apparently this was what they felt they wanted to do. They they're more comfortable with this kind of sound, and uh, yeah, I, I had actually heard this album before. Uh, one of my old guitar teachers actually introduced me to Pantera, and it was a little too heavy for me uh, when I first listened to it. Uh, but, you know, going back to it, I think I heard it again when I was in college and I was a little more open to it. Uh, I've heard, <laughs> heard a lot of these songs a couple times since then. This is probably my third time just sitting down and going through the, the full album. Uh, do either of y'all have any history with Cowboys from Hell? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That that doesn't surprise me, Travis. <laughs> I, I, no exaggeration. I think I've probably listened to this album at least a hundred times all the way through. Well, I, you know, I I recognized, um, no, well, I definitely recognized the title and the title track. I I had heard, um. And yeah, I mean, I I just kind of know know Pantera mostly through you know hanging out with Travis and <laughs> hearing uh, hearing some Pantera songs every now and then. Um, so I, I kind of had a feel for what their sound is, um, and kind of how. Dimebag Daryl sounded as a guitar player, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd never listened to this much Pantera before. Mm. Kind of interesting too, you know, being that they're from Pantigo or Arlington. Um, I've got a couple of family tie-ins to it. Um, so my uncle, by marriage, um, he went to school with Dimebag and Vinnie Paul, and he. Wow. Um, I think he hung out with him from time to time. Uh, I think he knows Rex fairly well as well. <laughs> He's got some pictures with him. So spent some time around him. And then uh, a guy that I used to uh, play with just from time to time, I think his cousin was like the, uh, he was a roadie for him or something at some point. I have some some sticks from Vinnie Paul <laughs> that, oh. that he got for me. So yeah, pretty cool that they were very close to home for us. Yeah, that's, that's, um, I, I kind of forgot that, uh, yeah, you, you said Pantigo and that, mm -hmm. that, that's where this was recorded. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, that's that's very cool that you have that connection, right? I, th I think uh, my, my uncle, who's kind of a into metal and stuff like that, um, definitely saw them like in the small clubs. That's awesome. Yeah, Graham, you uh, you said you recognized the name of the album. Did you recognize the? Uh... The opening riff from the, the the first song, the title track, Cowboys from Hell. I'm. I think I had heard that before. Yeah, it it, uh, it sounded very familiar. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I was reading about that's like some kind of like little looped uh, sound that happens at the beginning. The yeah. Um. This. You know, I. I don't know how I feel about this song. Um. What uh, as as a as a Pantera fan, Travis, is this is this a loved Pantera song or? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. no, I, I mean it's it's probably a song that I think anybody that's heard anything by Pantera has probably heard this song at some point in time. But mm-hmm. with that being said, I, I think it's still well respected and liked you know by even the most diehard fans yeah because i mean it's it's kind of you know power metal was the first album with anselmo phil anselmo which was the album that came before this and it's it's got some pretty heavy riffs on there um Mm -hmm. but this is like kind of like stefan said this is like their first you know really coming into their own with this sound and it's like that's you know it's the first track of doing that so <laughs> i think from the standpoint of is it a good opener i think it's amazing personally it's yep. that's such an iconic riff like just the intro you know the main riff the it is um, a good riff yeah. oh yeah and I mean, vocally, <laughs> you know, this is again kind of where Phil Anselmo comes into his own totally different style because they they came from hair metal, you know, and they basically yeah. like shed that identity entirely. Yeah, that's what I've um, always uh, always heard. It's it's kind of hard to find those old albums. Like you oh, really yeah. got to go looking for like projects in the jungle and metal magic stuff like that like they're they're not that accessible oh i i see yeah they're not even on spotify yeah yep and i mean there's there's like one decent song on each of those i would say yeah yeah <laughs> uh but yeah it's i i love it as an opening track it's just so heavy and raw and right down to it mhm gain city man i mean <laughs> Dude, just eleven out of ten on the uh, on the game knob. Yes, <laughs> and yeah. Dime Dime was he's, he kind of made Randall Amps famous, you know. Oh, really? Like everybody, you know, it was all two amps, two amps, and he played a solid state Randall for a hmm. while. Just gained out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that kind of that's that's his iconic sound. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a muddy sound sometimes. It is, you know. Like, he, I I really noticed that too. Listening to this album, I was like, you know, he he wasn't the cleanest player by any stretch, right? But he just the dude shreds, and I mean, the tone, you know, it's I could see, you know, people that are really into tone really disliking this right right <laughs> you know because it, it's just like i said it's it's game the hell out like it's i don't know it's just it fits the style very well and i i don't think prior to this there was anything this gritty really yeah but yeah, yeah. he he didn't need to be playing through a uh a princeton reverb <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Stefan, what what'd you think about this track? I think it's a perfect introduction. I it, think so too. A lot of if for the what they're going for. I, I don't think they could have uh, started the album any better. It's, right. Uh, probably it's probably Dimebag's most uh, celebrated or at least most known uh, yep. guitar work, and uh, it's I, you know, Phil and Selma on a on a few of these tracks really shows his vocal range, and he's uh, he's kills it on this one i mean i don't have much more to add i yeah it I definitely it. has a murky feel to it and a little mm-hmm. a little dirty but that's again that's the 
that's the intent, I think. I think that's right. what they're, they're going for, and that's what uh, Terry Day helping them try to, you know, channel in here. So I, I think they, they knocked it out of the park. I got to say, too, I think Rex Brown and Vinny Paul, I mean, well, not maybe Vinny Paul, but Rex Brown, I feel like it's it's pretty easy to get overshadowed by the other three guys. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> you know, but I, I just want to say, I think on this album especially, he does such a great job. Like, you know, the bass is just, it's great town. I mean, it, it's kind of, I don't know. It, it's, it's easy to get overshadowed by these guys. Definitely. Definitely. But I, he, he fits yeah. perfectly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Glad you, glad you mentioned him. I, I didn't, he doesn't have a lot of, uh, standout kind of flashy moments. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I thought he was, <laughs> he's right. he's instrumental. They, no, no, no. I can't imagine Pantera without Rex. No, I mean just his face. I mean, is enough to show that he belongs in and this band. I've always thought it was impressive too, with just Vinnie Paul and Rex. Like the fact that there was not a rhythm guitar player to still have that huge of rhythm sound, like Wall Dimes playing leads and stuff. Uh. I just how they made that work because it's like you know in in this genre I didn't really think that's about that I guess like, that's, that is the case for most metal bands is I can't gotta, think of any other metal band that rocked a single guitar player that's that's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No doubt. But yeah. Uh what'd you guys think about Primal Concrete Sledge? Liked the the second minute, I think from a dime bag solo on to the end. I liked it. Uh you talking about the where Vinny Paul hits the drum and it's like the little breakdown, I guess you could call it. Yep. Yep. The, There's that, a- that for sure. Uh, and Selmo does that kind of throaty roar uh, to start the lyrics off. What not 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 always a fan of that, but uh, <laughs> you know it, it's it's a it's a pretty it's it's, it's such a short song. I mean, it, it doesn't bring down the track for me. It's the the intro is just to me. It's like so hellish. Like it just yeah. feels like it's in the depths of hell. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. <laughs> Yes. You got Anselmo with that like stupid low growl and then that like shrieking demonic like scream over the top of it. And just I don't know, like <laughs> the end it's just so grimy. I mean sledge is the perfect word in my opinion. Like it's it's primal <laughs> and it just sounds super sledgy. It's just nasty. It's yeah. just some dark sounding music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, was this kind of new for metal? Like, uh, 1990? This is, I mean, this is, you know, you had um, Rust in Peace came out the same year. Uh, 90 or 91. But, yeah. you know, T-Cells came before this, which is pretty damn dark, too. Sure. Um, and there, I mean, obviously, this is, like, kind of around the time of the start of death metal, too. I think death had some stuff going on at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, I was trying to look and see what the first, I think the first death album was maybe like mid eighties. I could be wrong. Let me see. Uh, yeah. Scream bloody gore 87. So yeah, spiritual healing came out in 90. So yes, there, there was some heavier stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this, it's just kind of adds the groove element to, you know, that, I don't know, just death metal. Yeah, I, I keep seeing that term associated with Pantera, groove metal. Yeah, it's it's like, I would consider it to be, you know, just real heavy, but with kind of that bluesy element to it, and it's easy to move to. Mm. You know, it's, I, I don't know if there's a groove to it, you know, I... I don't well, know. It's not real like tight and math rocky. Oh, uh, there's an organicness to it. Yeah, yeah. I think 
<laughs> I, yeah, I, mean, I was trying to figure out what they what they meant there, and yeah, I guess it is kind of just in the riff, right? Um, the drums a, too. Uh, I think I think that's where a lot of the groove comes from. The bass and drums. Yeah, and there's a lot of sections where they'll just kind of like, I don't know, you got some ride cymbal going. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe that's just kind of a good good time to groove out. <laughs> um, do y'all like the little uh, triplets in this with Vinnie Paul? The boom. Yeah. I love that part. Gallop thing. Yep. That's, I. I I like this song better than uh, the opening track, strangely. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, this is, this has always reminded me of uh, you know pre hibernation, the SpongeBob episode, <laughs> how it featured <laughs> Pantera. It did. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Like this, this wasn't the song that played, obviously, but this this has kind of a similar feel to that. What was that song? Um, that was. I think that was around the time of, uh, um, like Great Southern Trend Kill. I could be wrong. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't. I think the song was like when it pre hibernation. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> yeah, did they write it for? Yeah. Wow. Two thousand one. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Uh, on the internet, it says genres country, country music. I saw that. And pop. Children's music <laughs> and pop. Uh, I believe that's incorrect. Oh, uh, okay. Death Rattle. That's what it came from. That Off Reinventing the Steel. That's right. Oh, got okay. it. That's, um, that's cool that they did that. Stefan, you didn't like Primal Concrete Sledge? No, the start of it kind of uh, kind of wore me down a little bit, but it's gotcha. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> There's that little pig squeal thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I yeah. I probably liked the the opener a little more, but you know, it's a it's 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 fine. And it's a, it's, about, a uh, it's a good carryover to Psycho Holiday, which I was, was going to ask. What you think about Psycho Holiday? This song was like a damn train crash, and I think that's exactly what they intended. It's <laughs> so so nasty with this sounds collide. This thing was brutal to listen to with headphones. <laughs> every every discordant part just like slamming into each other. I mean, there's like very little flow to Anselmo's verses and it's just that and the the instrumentation just kind of like stacked on top of each other and I I mean I this was a brutal listen to but again like I I think that's I think that's what they're going for Mm mhm yeah there are a lot of weird like time changes it's kind of uh, yes kind of abrupt yes Mm -hmm. oh yeah like very distinct sections to the song. Yeah. Yep. I thought it was a pretty good like showcase of the band. For sure. Um also kind Probably of Probably stayed with me more than any other song on the album. Oh yeah. Really? Yes. I I had to like I had to pause for a while to listen to it again before I finished the rest of the album. Um Yeah, I mean it it, it stood out to me. It's it's Kind of got a different feel than a lot of the songs in this album. Like I, it does. I heard a lot of Van Halen influence. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to ask what y'all thought of the solo. Kind of shuffly, and I, I don't even mean the the solo necessarily, but just kind of some of the riffs and the verses right. kind of have a, I don't know, like a little bit of a fun vibe to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you ask about um, so, solo um, it's, with this kind of stuff, it's always hard for me to like go back and because there's you know solos in every song, right? Um, I mean, just kind of my general takeaway is that Dimebag's super impressive. Um, just what, what he was able to accomplish as a player. 
I think um, on songs like Psycho Holiday too, it's kind of interesting because it's it's like a totally different feel when the solo hits, like real like mm. bluesy and just kind of I don't know, like it it doesn't really feel like the genre if that makes any sense. I mean, it has its moments where it does, but it's it. I don't know. There's different elements that. I think are kind of unique to their style. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a lot of times before the shredding, it's like kind of a, yeah. it almost sounds like a st- more standard, you know, right. rock, rock solo. Exactly. Which I kind of, I kind of appreciate that. Um, I think to me, yeah, he kind of is the band. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, not, not that they're not good players and whatever, but like, that's, I think my main takeaway is the guitar playing from this. That's one. probably intentional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He stands out for sure. Even yeah. though you're right, I mean the rest of them are really good. Yeah. I thought uh, Rex really stood out on this track too. I thought the bass was pretty solid in it. Yeah, yeah. Um. The next one, I I wasn't really expecting uh, Ans- Selmo to have like kind of a vocal range. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I thought his thing was kind of always kind of low register, whatever. But he actually got on this album, kind of test his range a bit. You talking about Heresy? Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's when he, or that's when I first started like. Paying attention to it. Yeah, he... I get a lot of, like, Rob Halford vibes from him. Judas Priest, like, with the vibrato and just the, like, high screams. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Definitely some serious Priest influence. Heresy's one of my favorite songs of theirs. Agreed. This I, is one of my favorite off the album. Dude, just the intro is so hard. Like, that harmonics bit, and then the... <laughs> Incredible build up. <laughs> yeah, I I love this song. It's just so heavy. Yep. It's yeah, just and, and like you said, Phil's vocals. Just when he says like, "Here we are in a world of corruption," like that first note is so high. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the uh, like the high notes, I did get a lot of like uh, James Hetfield vibes from his singing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, cool. Maybe just some of the... I don't know. It's, it's, it's something about, like, the... Like, the phrasing. I, I don't know. The, the choruses. The, there's something kind of head-filled fieldish. I could, I, could, I could definitely see it in the chorus of this song. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, now this album reminded me a lot of the Kill 'Em All album, actually. Mm. Not I can see that. Not that it like, I mean, is in the exact same genre, really. But like, I don't know. It. it I mean, I feel like it's similarly like solid mm-hmm. in terms of like I, it's consistent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, there was not a song on this album that I was like, this just sucks, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing just there for the sake of being there. Right, yeah. right. Yep, I definitely agree. I. It's funny, I like the pre-solo and the post-solo better than the solo in Heresy. Mm. I, I just love both of those parts. I'll have to go back and and see specifically what what that is, but that's that's interesting. And they do that on a lot of songs, like just the lead up to the solo and then like coming out of it, they're like specific parts that are different from the rest of the song, which I I kinda like. Yeah. Nice come up and come down from Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, dude, I love heresy. So much. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, this this uh, this is the 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 thing that stood out to me most on this was Vinnie Paul. 
just yes. destroying that Like that Dude. was kind of like most of my notes are just gushing about him on the first list. <laughs> just, just yeah. so, I had to go back so to also much. to try to hear something else because that was that was really the the standout feature for the power. Yeah, dude, when he just gets going on the double kicks, just just so much power. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, too, he's he's got a really good like groove to his playing too. It's very organic. Yeah, Which yeah, I appreciate. What y'all think about the the big change of pace, Cemetery Gates? Okay, this um this was the one that to go back to Graham's point about uh Phil Anselmo's you know yes. range. This is the song that made me kind of like, oh wow, he's like a he's he's like a singer. He's not just growling and shit back there. That's that's like, why I clarified. I was like heresy. Like I yeah, thought he had I, yeah. skipped ahead to Cemetery Gates, but yeah, mm. um, for sure. Yeah, this is, uh, I believe this is the, this is like the longest song that Pantera ever, ever wrote. Wow. And, uh, yeah, what, uh, um, I, I, Travis, I, I wanted to know what you thought, because I think there's a, there's a version of this without the, uh, the acoustic opening. I, I liked it. I liked that part, but I, mm-hmm. I, I was, I was, I could see, you know, some Pantera fans not, not being as cool with that. I can't imagine it without that, personally. Nice. Uh, I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I think it's necessary, personally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's just such a haunting song, like, especially with what all ultimately happened. I don't know. Sure. It just it oh, hits a little yeah. differently. <laughs> oh, good point. You know, with oh, dimes yeah. passing and... Oh, yeah, I mean... There's a little... I'm not going to say beef, but I don't think things ended on great terms between Anselmo and, and the Abbott brothers. Oh, is you that know? right? Yeah, and this song, it just, I don't know, it, it's, it hits a little differently. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the band's guitarist, Dimebag Daryl, was, uh, he was murdered during a, a performance up in Ohio, I think it was. Yep, playing with Damage Plan. Oh, okay. it wasn't even Pantera. Okay. No, they I, had disbanded, and it was a deranged fan. God. <laughs> Upset about that. Yep. God, that was one of the worst stories ever. Uh-huh. Just brutal. Um, but yeah, uh, Cemetery Gates is so great. And I mean, just talking about vocal range. <laughs> <laughs> Especially at the end, you know, where it's kind of call and response with Dime and Phil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just like, oh my gosh, dude. Yes. I, uh, I, I guess I should have known, but I, I didn't realize that Pantera, you know, did songs like this. Like I thought it was always just yeah, chugging and thrashing. But I, you know, I guess every metal band kind of has their ballads and. This does kind of sound or starts off like a kind of standard metal ballad that you might hear from like Metallica or Megadeth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of expected to dislike it. Um, but I don't know. I was like, this, this is, this has got something. It's a great song. Yeah. It yeah. It really is. And it, it has, there are many changes and various parts and, it's yeah. I don't know. It's a great song. Yeah. The next song I think was the one I was the most familiar with. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. I, I drove this song into the ground in middle school. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, I remember this intro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Y'all notice too, and I mean, this is, I think this is the first song where it really stands out. The amount of reverb on most of these, like master reverb on a lot of uh, these songs. Uh, I. And when he's like, time smells like a motherfucker. And it's like, I don't know. There's just like, it sounds like they're in an echo chamber. 
<laughs> yeah, and like Benny Paul's drums always have a reverb sound on them. Mm. It's, 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 it's not something I I noted, um, mm-hmm. but I'm sure you know for you listening for the you know two hundred two hundred <laughs> time or whatever. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, that there was that weird. Is it a kick drum or? Towards the end, the just yeah. like explosion when he hits the kick, yeah, the yeah, boom. yeah, that was yeah. that was a weird, uh... right? Um, you know, Dude, this solid metal song, this intro, yeah. this song, just I don't know, it's like <laughs> it's like if you told me I was about to go do intense manual labor for the next fifteen hours, this is how I would start my day right here. <laughs> Domination. Intense, Intense manual, manual labor. labor. Yes. Jeez, Fifteen hours. Or maybe yes. maybe playing a, a football game, you know? Yes. This dude, this song oh, just yeah. it gets me so pumped. Yeah. Weight room material for sure. Pantera. It's, just, for that. it's the build too, you know? It's just yeah. like it comes in with the dumb. And then it's like then you know the drum cadence changes. And then there's mm-hmm. that just ride double bass, just yeah, and it just progresses so perfectly. And a lot of energy, man. Yeah. Just so you, simple. And ah, did yeah. you guys yeah. ever? <laughs> did you guys ever warm up to a track meet with this song? Uh, me by myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh man. It's it's, uh, just, it's perfect for that. It's so good. Yeah, I don't know. It's and and the pre solo too. The you know, oh, <laughs> guy. <laughs> gonna, have to, gonna have to change my shorts, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like is it, no, but like I, the, yeah. I think you're right though. Like it, it, the fact that it's the it's coming off a, a seven minute power ballad. I mean, it's a real like shot to the gut. I mean, it real. It, it's such a just, you just pop out of your seat hearing this the, song on the album. The power like that. That's the thing that just stands out to me. And I've watched. Uh, if y'all have ever seen any footage from Monsters of Rock in mm-hmm. Moscow. I think that's like the biggest concert in the history of man. I think in attendance is like 1.4 million people or something like that. <laughs> and uh, there's a shot or there's a video of, the, of domination and it. That live video, it's just stuck with me forever. It's this song and like, dude, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people were there specifically at that time watching this set, but it's like, Pantera, Pantera, like Soviet military, and then all these fans in a black and white recording, and it's just like the most powerful thing ever. Uh, you gotta watch it if you've never seen it. <laughs> it's amazing, but uh, yeah, I, I I can't say enough great things about this song. <laughs> if it's, you can't tell, yeah, it's it may, maybe the strongest on the album. I mean. J- I don't know. There, there's a wide range of songs on here. Like you've got the long ballad. This one, mm-hmm. I feel like, is just kind of the straight up, like raw, like power. Yeah. Yep. Um, the energy, dude. It's like, how can yeah. you just sit still and listen to this song? I don't think they should have opened the album with it. You know, I Nomination. I could totally see that. That's the only other song I would have put to open things up with. But I, yeah. I could, Definitely see that. Yeah, the energy is just incomprehensible. Like, yeah. and I really like to, you know, the obviously the breakdown after the solo. The <laughs> do, 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 do. Mm-hmm. I like how towards the very end, when it's like channeling Dimebag left and right, left and right, and then together. Yes, it's just such a powerful thing to me. Like. And then they come together with the do 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 do. Oh man! Yeah, I've got nothing else on that one. 
Mm. Yeah. yeah. If y'all have anything to add. No. That's pretty comprehensive look at track number six. So Shattered, track seven, to me, that's like the first kind of what I'd consider like a deep cut from this album. Mm. Like it, it wasn't one that, you know, like everything we've listened to up to this point, it's like most metal heads have, they're all very familiar with all those songs. Mm. Yeah. I would say. Shattered is, I think it's a little more of a deep cut. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, not to say I don't like it, it's, I don't know, the the riff is just, it's great. You got Anselmo with <laughs> the high register Yeah, vocals. what, do y'all, do y'all like him when he goes that high? <laughs> if he doesn't overstay his welcome there. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, you know, in moderation, it's, it's good, but this is the one where I started really getting Rob Halford vibes, like all the vibrato and just way up there you know it, it just oozes judas priest to me um i'm not a like a huge fan of him as a singer i mean i i, I don't know I, I feel like with most metal that's kind of my my take <laughs> um, yeah. that's fair um but uh it, it was impressive that he, that he could get way up there on the in the register. Um, if y'all have ever listened to an interview with him, you don't wait all like the lowest voice ever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, really? Yeah, so it's like, I, he kind of has that look. Yeah. He's yeah, he a, uh, intimidating guy. For sure. <laughs> yeah. The whole band is kind of rough looking. Yes. Yes. Dime and Vinnie Paul just seem like they've always struck me as like, let's crush some light beers and have a great time. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard that that's kind of their, uh, that was kind of their personality. Almost like the evolution of Leonard Skinner to me. That's, <laughs> you know, I, that's yeah. how I've always seen the two of them. Just Southern dudes, Southern rock, have a good time. Mm hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Vinnie Paul played in the band, hell yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just he's, he's very got, much that, that vibe. He's got interesting facial hair, but both of them really. Yes. Yep. <laughs> the hairy dudes. Yeah, the, the barred chops and the pink goatee, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, oh, this, yeah. I, other things I noted in this song too just insane gain like insane amounts of gain mm. um kind of bluesy shred too yeah yeah did y'all notice the bottle at the end the shattering yeah. bottle yeah. Did, <laughs> did hear the glass break at the end yes oh yeah thought that was a funny touch yeah, yeah. um and you mentioning bottle just I wanted to say something about the album cover. Um, yeah, it, it looks like a <laughs> like a Photoshop project in like high school or something. Yeah, which which is like perfect. Yeah. All right, it's like okay, here's a picture of this old saloon <laughs> bar. Photoshop was in there. Yeah, <laughs> there is kind of just like that fun kind of like high school vibe about them. Like, yeah. yeah. Like it's, you know, the sound is kind of rough around the edges, and I don't know, man. That like, uh... yeah, I don't know. That just cracks me off for some reason. It's raw. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's... yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. agree. I agree. And it, it's honestly, you know, when you get into the stuff like the follow-up album, Vulgar Display of Power, and then you've got. Uh, far beyond driven that stuff it gets a lot more serious it i think it they kind of lose that mm. you know this is a little more like i'm not gonna say happy go lucky because it's not at all but uh, just, i don't know it, it just seems a little happier in a weird way 
Yeah. 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 That's like, yeah. I think Phil Phil got into some pretty heavy stuff, you know, with the vulgar display of power and far beyond driven those times. Like, you know, he obviously had been quite hard, and I think he dealt with some pretty chronic back pain issues and turned to some pretty serious things to cope with that. I yeah. think the music reflects that pretty heavily. Mm, yeah, I did. I did read a bit about him before this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds like he had a heroin overdose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still alive, mm-hmm. though, correct? Him and Rex yeah. are still kicking. Yep. He, yeah. Uh, yeah. They still play. Yeah. He went on to do some like stoner metal stuff with Down. And uh, I think it's Philly and Selmo and like the Bandits or something. I think they play a lot of Pantera songs now. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, that's uh, that's shattered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which y'all think of clashed with reality? Also, one I'd consider kind of a deep cut. I I feel like this it was kind of getting monotonous. Like yeah. uh, I was like, I, I feel like I've I've heard a lot of songs that sound like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so far. So this is. Like when the album kind of felt like it was dragging a little bit. I could see that. I could yeah. definitely see that. Um, yeah. Little groove, groove intro. Yeah. Yeah, that hissing drum sound right off the mm-hmm. bat. Right. Yeah, no, nothing particularly like bad about it. It just uh, didn't do a lot for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Uh, got that wah solo, too. <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> Yeah, heavy, he was, heavy wall. He was a big wall guy, wasn't he? Oh, uh, yeah, I would say so. Oh, yeah, lots of uh, is is that a good way to get those squealy pinch harmonics, or, or is that mostly uh, whammy bar? Yeah, definitely whammy because he would just like dive, <laughs> you know, right? Just dive it and then like strike on like. I don't know, like second fret of like <laughs> the G string, you know, mm. or B, and then just bend it all the way back, and it would just right. squeal. Yeah, <laughs> yep. The dime squeals. He kind of coined that. Yeah, yeah. Like artificial harmonics. Right, right. But yeah, yeah. I don't have much on Clash with Reality. It's, I mean, yeah. I think the album, for me at least, is just, it's amazing from start to finish. But this is definitely, if I'm ranking the tracks, Shattered, Clash with Reality, Medicine Man, which we're about to get to, yeah. and Message and Blood. Those are uh, those are probably at the bottom of my list. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of Medicine Man, the next one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The little volume swell intro. <laughs> yeah, this is uh this one's I always this one still sounds kind of out of place on this album because it's super theatrical. Yeah, mm-hmm. you get the, the spoken vocals from Phil yes. too. Yes, doing <laughs> his uh his dark menacing like devil voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's like it it's yeah. uh it Musically, it just it feels a lot simpler than a lot of the other tracks too, and mm-hmm. you know it does have that drum build up and the the you know kind of the spooky growl from Anselmo, but it's it still feels kind of toned down for this band. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, yeah, I uh, I mean we kind of touched on this <laughs> about the ridiculous album cover, which by the way is just the. Full- of them like photoshopped into like an old west saloon yeah. <laughs> just, like, not in costume just wearing like their their, their metal gear from the 80s and like yeah. this is kind of a I don't know I like the, the wilder the better I feel like with Pantera and this song was just just a little bit underwhelming I thought yeah, yeah. it's uh <laughs> it's definitely a grower I would say <laughs> it take, you know, it's not a like instant hit. Like, oh man, that that was great right off the bat. Yeah. Um. No. Go. Go ahead. 
I was going to say just to my comment about a lot of like master reverb on the album, this album, or I'm sorry, this song, I, I, I felt that big time on too. Just mm. Real echo chambery. Yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, high, high vocals, I don't know, it got a little ridiculous. Yeah. The <laughs> like, it reminded me of like those isolated, uh, um, what's his name? David Lee Roth. Yes. Yeah. Dude, I knew, yeah. I, I agree. Yes. Yeah. Just, just it was like, ah! I, I'm not going to try. <laughs> right. <laughs> the vibrato yes. and the, yeah. Yes. Um, just running with the devil isolated. That, yeah. Yes. Exactly. I, I feel exactly. <laughs> What'd you think about the solo in this? Um, you know, I didn't really make note of it. Does it happen at the end? That's, that's, that answers that question. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, oh, it just, there's some, some weird sounds to it, which I I don't necessarily love. Uh, so there's not really much to the solo. Uh, uh, yes and no. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite solo on this album? We're we're getting there. Oh, we're not there yet. I see. Yes, and it might <laughs> actually even be my favorite song too. Oh damn! Um, so next track, "Message in Blood." Mm-hmm. Bomb drum work. I thought from Vinnie Paul just crushed it. Definitely. There's some weird chords in this song too. If you listen closely, they're just yeah some odd notes to stack on to some some regular chords. Yeah, this one was was pretty cool. Like they had a the old dual guitar solo thing going. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, I I don't really recall anything about the chords, but yeah, you know, this is just my first listen through, so it always is weird to me to hear like something more than power chords with this much gain. You know what I mean? It, it kind of has like a different effect to it. Mm, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I don't know. And in, in, in this song, there's some of that. It, it just sounds kind of odd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I feel like most most metal artists play power chords all the time. Yeah, for sure. No, hundred percent. Yeah, but there's there's some weird accent notes on some of these chords that it's that gives it this weird, and I, I think just some of the the gain has something to do with that. But it's got this like weird dissonant quality to it. Mm-hmm. Like it, it just sounds like it, the note doesn't belong in there. Like it's it's I don't know. It's an unclean addition to it. Yeah, you know, it could it could just be you know slightly out of tune. I don't know, you know, it's just sure. it's just enough off to where it's like yeah, that kind of feels uncomfortable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I mean, hell, playing with a Floyd Rose, I, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> All that diving and, you know, I I don't know. Sure. Maybe, you know. Just yanking that thing. Yeah, it's like, you know, you dive and then you come back. The chances of it being perfectly back to where it was. Yeah, it's probably gonna be a little off. He Should must be, have but... had a, a really good guitar tech. Yeah, no on the joke. road, no joke. Um, have... Go ahead. Uh, well, no, I, just the solo, the guitar solos on this song were really stand out to me. Yeah, they're well, weird. Like... Yeah, yeah, really weird. Tons of pinch up. harmonics in here too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Some, some groove too uh, lots of groove I thought I like the post chorus or yeah the post solo I'm sorry mm. pretty sick yeah I think yeah and the, the drumming was like you said mm-hmm. the, the double kick oh yeah well uh, my favorite solos <laughs> mm. The sleep, yeah. Okay. Track eleven. This this might be. It, I feel like I always come back to this as what 
one of my favorites, if not my favorite Pantera song. Seriously? I love The Sleeve, dude. I Do love so. this song. I don't know. It just it has a bit of everything in it, you know? It's it's got the clean stuff, it's got the real slow, grimy stuff. The solos I think are just some of Dime's best. I these love are, this song. These are great solos. They're just, I don't know, like the tone and the feel. It I don't know. I feel like they're the this is the most emotional solo, in my opinion. That almost sounds like like Alex Lifeson or something at parts. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Like those just really long sustained notes. That's and the this, love guitarist, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm making sure. And this yeah. song has this song has some weird chords in it too. The bona bona. Yeah. Um, just some weird stuff. I don't know. I, I absolutely love this song. It's so heavy in a different way. Yeah, and that, that acoustic riff is kind of cool. I mm-hmm. love that. I love that. And I love that they kept coming back to it. I thought it was mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just right before the solos, you know, the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just ah man. The sleep is just it's the perfect name for the song. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that I thought it was strong. Stefan. Yo. No, I was just asking what you thought of this. Oh, I'm asleep? <laughs> Yo, oh, yeah, it's, it's you're such falling a... asleep over there. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, no, I, uh, I, I'm always, again, this is one of them that kind of surprises me. This is not the, the first song I think of when I just hear the name Pantera. Uh, right. I, I, I love this one. I love that they uh, saved it for the end. Um, mm-hmm. This is, this song kind of makes me a little salty towards Anselmo because it follows Message in Blood, which I think lyrically might be like the worst song on the album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, just the, 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 the content that the singer's on about. But I mean, this one, I mean, he's, he's great on this. And this is a, I, I think this song is like, it's beautiful. And I don't, I do think too. That word, I don't use that word often, even describing Pantera songs that I like. Yeah, sure. no, I, I I agree. It's it's a weird adjective to use with them, but it, it fits on this one. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be my favorite track. I don't know. It's up there for sure. Yeah. Um, and then the next one. Um, I, was there? Did anyone else expect more shredding? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I could see I was that. Expecting, like I was expecting like Dragon Force kind of thing. <laughs> right. Just like Dragon Force. I mean, I it, it, frankly, I, I was the, the first time I listened to it. I was surprised that there was. I I, I thought it's just gonna be just Daryl for just. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. just freaking all over the guitar. Yeah, yeah I can see I, that. I feel like that would have been kind of unnecessary, just because yes. of all. So maybe, maybe it's good that. Oh what, yeah, is, is there like a twenty second solo at the end of this? Uh, yeah. If that, yeah, yeah, it's it's very short. It is. Maybe Which, it's kind of funny. Yeah, the the irony in it is <laughs> there's very little shredding. No. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Was shred- shredding associated with guitar back then? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because, I mean, you had the the Malmsteins and, like... Oh, yeah. Cacophony existed, which I was... I think that was... Uh, what's his face? Marty Friedman and... Was it, it's not just that. Herman Lee. Um, Buckethead. No. Who am I thinking of? Uh, <laughs> wow. I, I wasn't even listening to what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Um, 
Oh my God, what was his name? Jason Becker. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, that was just like absolute shred fest. Right. Um, I, dude, the artist shredding is one of my favorite Pantera songs. Yeah, it's just it's it's so heavy. It's so great. The chorus is so 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 good. Yeah, this is the yacht. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just love it. I yeah. love it, dude. It's and it's a showcase for the whole band. The riffs too, man. The intro, you know, Rex on bass, and then the yeah. do 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 do. And then straight into the. I mean, it's just it's it's fast riffage. Yes, very fast riffage. Yeah, and some time signature changes too. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Uh, I guess you could call it the bridge of this song. I really like the bridge. Mm. And then just oh man, I don't know. I love the song. (laughs) I think it is. One hell of a closer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. wouldn't. I wouldn't disagree. Me neither. Yeah. Me it's, neither. It's amazing. Ah. Do <laughs> 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 y'all have anything else to add on on that one? Uh, no, not really. Uh, no, it, it, it didn't. Uh, didn't really like stand out for me yeah um, but you know i i'd agree it was a strong closer yeah yeah did y'all notice uh how long the song is uh mine says 418 yeah i thought it was around that sound like four i think four eleven. technical one was 420 <laughs> <laughs> really Oh, it yeah. is. It is. <laughs> I see that on, and, see that on Wikipedia. And as you may or may not know, these guys were uh, definitely strong proponents. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. I would think, yeah. Very, very strong proponents. Yeah. Solidarity, I mean, man. They, they strike me as more of just like a an alcohol fuel <laughs> yeah. thing. Right. Just testosterone and alcohol. Yeah, yeah. And bo. I can <laughs> do. I can smell it. Just looking at that album cover. I can yeah, smell it. yeah. That oh, that makes it more believable. Also, I read a, an old interview with Vinnie Paul where he was talking about like how uh, I think Kiss was one of his and Daryl's favorite bands growing up. Mm-hmm. Oh that yeah, made, dude. Uh, that, that that makes the the stonerism a little more a little more believable. I think. <laughs> <laughs> stonerism <laughs> it's it is really interesting to me to see like some of the big influences for them you know i mean they're it just basically southern rock and glam stuff you know yeah. they were yeah. in they were really into the theatrical stuff yeah yeah not really not a lot into of it. not a ton of heavy mm. heavy influences yeah like, it's it, it's always surprised me like where did this heaviness come from and it's like is it is it anselmo like because it started with him yeah you know, with the power metal album mm. that's that's when the sun the sound change came but i don't know it's it's always interested me which i'll think uh overall of this album i really liked it um yeah. i uh <laughs> I, I've definitely come to appreciate it more. Uh, I think for what they're what they're going for, it it works. I I mean, this is a, I I don't I don't know if I'd recommend it. I think I'd if I was talking to someone who was trying to get them into Pantera, I'd probably tell them to listen to I don't know maybe the I mean I'd, I I. Cowboys from Hell isn't my favorite song off the album, but I feel like that's they, they sh- you should probably start with a song like that if you're looking to get into this band. Mm-hmm. Well, there, I think there are better songs than that on this album, but I mean, this is stuff like The Sleep and Cemetery Gates. I mean, those stand out because that that's not the what you what really comes to mind when you think of Pantera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I'm not I'm not sure how 
how much I'd recommend this album, but I, I know I really liked it. I mean, I, I scored this an eight out of 10, no problem. Nice. Dang. Graham. Um, I mean, y'all know that I'm not like a big metal fan and I'm probably not going to, you know, go back to this, but you know, I, I feel like I would put it up there with the, uh, you know, kill them all album and, you know, probably give it a seven. That's oh. solid. Nice. Yeah. 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 That's I'm, I'm surprised to hear that. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, yeah, it's just kind of hard to, hard to give it lower than that. Cause it's yeah. like, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I think, I think they got exactly what they were going for. You know what I mean? Just like a makes me happy to hear. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Yeah. In in terms of recommending it, um, if you're if you're into metal, you know. Yeah. uh, Otherwise, probably not. I mean, the the guitar playing's interesting enough. If you're kind of into the shredder thing, (sighs) you should definitely hear this. Um, but yeah, is this your favorite Pantera album, Travis? It is actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Which I feel like this usually isn't like a diehard Pantera fan's favorite album. I feel like most of them either go vulgar display of power or yeah, I'd say vulgar. Or mm-hmm. well, I guess maybe far driven, but. Definitely vulgar would be the top competitor to it. But yeah, this this mm-hmm. is my favorite personally. Yeah. Um, man. I'd have to say it's a nine for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I I just it starts very well and it ends very well and it it, it never really lets up. You know, I I Yes, you know, the shattered to message and blood area is that's that's where I'm gonna give it the small deduct. And I mean it's those are still great tracks, but I don't know. That's that's I don't love some of those as much as I love the rest of the album. Otherwise I'd probably go nine and a half. Yeah. But yeah, I I, I absolutely love this album. I think it's it's consistent. It's unique, you know. It's it's definitely a pioneer album for this genre and this sound. Yeah, I love but, it. Who I'd recommend it to? Uh, hmm. Let's say I don't know because I feel like anybody who's into metal, this is kind of one of the places they probably started. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And, and sure. get. Oop, can y'all hear me? Sorry, somebody yeah. was cutting. Uh, get cut um, out for a second. Yeah, Just a sec. yeah I don't know. I, 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 I would recommend it to pretty much anybody. Just, just to check out. So, okay. real quick, Travis, I'm going to blow your mind because do you know the name Derek Shulman? Shulman. Ah, uh, it's it's not a name that I immediately recognize, but I don't. He, he appears in the Wikipedia article of this album. Okay, Der- Derek Shulman was the lead singer for Gentle Giant. No, oh, I see that. Okay, and, and was he asked by his boss, Derek Shulman. He was a record executive after being in Gentle Giant. And, uh, yeah, he was interested in signing Pantera and told, you know, some dude, like, go see them perform. That wow. Just, that just, that just dawned, dawned me when I was kind of scanning this. Oh, for yeah. Atco. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, I had no idea. Dude, that is wild. <laughs> yeah. For, for you Gentle Giant fans out there. I am wacky I'm prog rock from the seventies. Mind blown. <laughs> I thought you would be. 
That's crazy. I wonder what what drew him to this. <laughs> yeah. Who knows, man? Interesting. Yeah, you <laughs> see that bit about Mark Ross talking about by the end of the first song, my jaw was on the floor the sonic power of it all, the attitude, the musicianship. Right, right. Mm, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Pretty much. I feel like the music industry is such a huge thing, but it's really not. <laughs> it's so intertwined. <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it is. Paths cross ways <laughs> in odd ways. Hells yeah. yeah. That's all mm-hmm. I've got. Y'all have That's... anything to add? No. I think no. we pretty much covered Cowboys from Hell. All right. Well, if you're still with us, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. As always, like, subscribe, you know, share the episode, talk about three different ones. Uh, we'll be back soon. Uh, we got more out. Yeah, come back to see us. See ya.